Hey guys, I'm just gonna do a quick run through of my 12.5 file just in case anyone actually needs to use anything like this uh, in the future, in uni, out of uni, whatever. Um, the uh, the functions that I've used in Mathematica aren't really that complicated, but having it laid out like this probably looks confusing as shit. So this is why I'm doing this. Um, yeah, so pretty much it just starts off, you know, simple inputs and then a function which determines whether or not the uh, the the answer will be <coughs> an inverting or a non-inverting op amp. Basically, if uh, this this will return a boolean value, and it's always done with a check of f one. I can do f zero. F one is easiest to do, just so you don't get any uh, zero errors or whatever. But um. Basically, this is used in two places. It's used here and it's used here for good reason. Uh, where it's used here is when it's initially determining whether it's inverting or non-inverting. If it's inverting, it uses the proper inverting gain uh, equation. If it's non-inverting, it uses the proper non-inverting gain equation. Uh, the inverting one doesn't have the sign because it deals with magnitude instead of uh, just like what value, what exact value it is. and uh, because magnitude is signless, it takes the absolute value, and obviously you're not going to get a negative resistance, so I've just omitted that section, and you get uh, RF on uh, I. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, same deal for the other one. The uh, next two lines is just an array with your E24 and your E12 values. I started the um, the resistor array at a hundred because anything below that will, in in terms of um, practicality, lower lower resistances don't work very well with certain uh, capacitors. And um, I started the the capacitor array at one, all the way up to eight point two, and it goes lower than that. Obviously, it doesn't go up um, for the same reason. Um, yeah, and basically, I'll, I'll start with the resistor array. It assigns it to another array, uh, the same value. I want to be not changing the value of this, so I use this as a base standard. And then I have a for loop here that adds this mul this entire thing multiplied by 10 to the power of um, whatever increment it is in the for loop. So the first time it'll do. It'll, you'll have res A is just equal to this, and then it'll add on um, this times 10 to the power of 1, so it's 10, so add on 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, etc. And then the next loop, it'll add on 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, 30,000, etc., 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 et, cetera, et, cetera, et cetera, until it gets to the power of 6. It's probably excessive, but um, I don't know. You can reduce it if you want, I just want to make sure that it found absolutely everything and it doesn't really detract that much from the full performance. It takes about five seconds to find an answer in most cases. Or well, my system anyway. Um, and the next thing does similarly, uh, you've got your your main cap array. I don't want to change this one, that's why I've made another one. Um, gives it the uh, gives it the existing values and then it goes through the for loop again. Yeah, but in this case, it multiplies by 10 to the negative i for each increment. So the next one, it'll tack on 0 0.1, 0 0.12, 0 0.15, 0 0.18, etc. And for the one after that, it'll be 0 0.01, 0 0.012, 0 0.015, etc., 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 until it gets to uh, and 10 to the negative 9, which is nano, obviously. And that, that's typically what we're dealing with. And you could probably start it at that, but you know, no performance hit, so not really a performance hit anyway. Um, the next thing is kind of, I kind of had a dodgy way of doing this, but it worked and it seems to work for pretty much everything that I've seen anyway. Um, I have a bunch of temporary arrays that I use to narrow down. Uh, some of these values. The first thing, the first temporary array is created 
using the tuples function, which basically takes it, it takes the values of two lots of the complete resistor array and one lot of the capacitor array because we need two resistors and a capacitor. Um, these will be treated independently of each other, and what it does, it creates every, an array with um, an array of arrays. Each of those arrays is three. Uh, three values, two resistors and a capacitor, and it, and it finds every single different possible combination that it can. The, this, this one line is the reason why this file takes so long to, to generate anything. Because it's what? It'll be, uh, what's, how many is that? 20, 25 uh, different things, and this is what? 12 or something? It'll be a lot of values. It's 25 times 25 times 12 and then it tries to sort through all those. Um, yeah, so it finds every single combination possible and then the first thing it does is uh, it checks if you're using an inverting or non-inverting uh, op-amp. The reason it does that is for this line here if you're using an inverting op amp, you have a resistance that's less than, um, well, RIN, so it has to take that into account. And it now, and the select what select does is that it chooses everything within the temp array that satisfies this argument. Uh, in this case, if we we're using the function. Uh, here, if the first value, which is your input resistance, is less than the input resistance, which is the check we want to use because that is critical to what we're trying to find out, uh, then put it into the temp2 array. And that takes, uh, for, for an inverting of amp, it takes those and then puts them into another array, and then the next line takes uh, those further values and runs them through another thing which um, calculates the gain and also it, it calculates the gain and then checks it uh, against just a arbitrary error so I've, I've just put it as 0 0.1 because typically you're not going to get errors greater than that you could you could nail it down to maybe 0 0.05 but some I don't I didn't want to risk it just in case um, Having it at zero point one will generate a lot more results, and it'll take longer to do. But you know, running it now one, two, three, four, five, five seconds doesn't really do much. Obviously, it won't be the same every time, but you know, it's not so bad. Um, and yeah, so it it does that with the gain. Make sure the gain is within a proper. Um, a, a, a practical range of what we're actually aiming for. Um, yeah, and the the other line basically this this is the uh, the first part of the if statement. And this is the second part of the if statement. This is if it's true, and this is if it's false. So basically, if it's an inverting op amp, it does those two, and if it's a uh, non-inverting, it just does that. The reason is because if it's a non-inverting your input resistance is so high because of the uh, the properties of the op amp itself. It doesn't actually have a minimum resistance, so well, it, yeah, but, uh, it, it does have a minimum resistance, but it doesn't matter for the resistors that we're choosing. So it allows us to use everything within the range and doesn't restrict us. This is why it doesn't use this line here. And basically, after you've got Everything nailed down to temp three. It then checks um, your break frequency if it's within a thousand hertz of what we want, and that's that's the final um, list of resistors that we have. This this will pretty much nail it down to a number ranging between zero to a hundred. Sometimes, sometimes a little bit larger. Um, in it, actually no, it's a, actually most times it's a lot larger. My mistake. Um, but the answer is typically the, the final answer is typically within the first hundred results.
but you don't need to know about that. Don't worry about that. Um, and then what it does is that uh, it, it checks for the minimum value, um, that error value that we're trying to get. This is a lot harder than I expected to be explaining. <laughs> Um, obviously start your minimum at infinity because that's what you're checking against. You don't want to, you, you can really set it to a hundred because it's really only ever going to be a hundred percent error. No, it'll actually never be a hundred percent. Anyway, anyway. Um, and, uh, I've got two more functions. The first function is checking break frequency, but that's a cutoff frequency, but it's, um, yeah, yeah, sorry, this is right, yeah, it is cutoff frequency because it's taking in your capacitor value and your resistor value against uh, 2 pi, or WO, which is this and one of these things, I can't remember. Um, and then this function takes in everything to determine your error. And after that, there's a final for loop that um, it'll run this over and over and over again for every every single um, combination in temp four that we've narrowed it down to, and every time that it's determined a uh, an error that is lower than our existing um, min value, it will it'll um, yeah it, it'll it'll pretty much assign the minimum value there and uh, find the value of that particular um, combination in the array. I decided to do it this way so I'm not printing out tons and tons of results over and over and over again. You can see if I, if so, if I slightly edit this, um, where are we? If I do this, I think, oh no, I have to do it. This will only execute these these two lines here. Should be three lines. Will only execute if uh, the particular one it's checked is has a lower error than the um, the one the, the last one that it found. And you can see the progression here. I'll print that, and I'll also print. Um, oh shit! No, okay, never mind. Wrong button. Okay, so you can see it here by printing the errors. Uh, the first one it finds an error of two uh, zero point zero two eight five nine one. And then the next one is 0 0.0268, and the next one is 0 0.0262, and the next one is 0 0.0166. And uh, you can even see the position of these in the array. Or not. Never mind, that's weird. But anyway, yeah, you can see you can see the regression. It just tries to find lower and lower and lower. And when it gets to this point, it'll it'll keep cycling through them, but it never finds anything lower. So obviously, uh, this will be the final error it gets, which will be pos whatever pos it is. It prints out that result, and then it shows you the error of that result. And that's well, difficult to explain, and still kind of hard despite explaining it. That's just essentially. What it does gets the arrays, finds every single combination that you could possibly get, narrows it down, checks it against your equations to see if it's within a certain range, and then finds the one with the lowest error. In a nutshell, <laughs> um, if you need any more explanation, <coughs> you can always Google. But you know, post a comment on the um, on the video link, and yeah. I'll do, I'll do my best to answer it. Um, yeah, so good luck.